Baker Mayfield, that dude. Are the Cleveland Browns going to make some noise? We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll switch transition to the NFC. Are the Seahawks the best team in the NFC, or is there somebody else we need to be talking about other than Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, and the crew? All that coming up. Plus, Kendrick Perkins has a take. He says, regardless of John Wall being there, there's no way in hell James Harden should be leaving Houston. We'll talk about that and more up next. First take, Friday. You know what time it is. Let's go. When that clock starts, turn into savages. We have the best backfield in the league. There's no question. Is this run game going? Those two guys are extremely special. A hurdle. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Shot on the ball. Baker Mayfield. Feel free to score touchdowns. To make these moments count. These are the things that we've been trying to build up to, and we're here now. Um, hello everybody. Stephen A, it's not just Friday. It's a feel good Friday, y'all. How are we doing this morning? Good to see you both. We have plenty to talk about. Good morning. Good morning. Max, Stephen A, I'm Molly. Morning, guys. Uh, let's get right to it because we got a lot of football and we have a lot of NBA as well. I want to start with the Cleveland Browns, as Stephen A just mentioned. So they're now eight and three. Um, they're second in the division behind the Steelers, currently the five seed in the AFC playoff picture. They've won their last. Last three, Stephen A. Sunday they face Tennessee. So tell me this. I will start with you. Do you finally believe in Baker and the Browns? Well, I believe in the Browns. I'm not sure I believe in Baker Mayfield. I think Bart Scott earlier this morning on Get Up said it best. There's no quarterback who's done less with more than Baker Mayfield. The jury's still out about him. We know that they're eight and three, but we also know that this guy's only completing 21, uh, 61% of his passes. He's only thrown for 2,100 yards over the first uh, 10 or 11 games or so. And so when I look at it from that perspective, 17 touchdowns, seven interceptions is nothing to, to, to sneeze at per se. Nothing that, that blows you away, but he's not throwing an abundance of interceptions. We'll give him credit for that. But look at what he has. He's got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt at the running back spot. Even with Odell Beckham Jr. going, you still got Jarvis Landry in the crew and Hooper and those boys. So you've got a multitude of weapons. Kevin Stefanski deserves a lot of credit uh, because of how he's he's basically kept, kept Baker Mayfield contained, per se, and utilized the other assets around him and just, and just basically have asked Baker Mayfield not to lose the damn game. And to his credit, he hasn't. But let's remind everybody, that outside, when they lost their last game, it was against the Las Vegas Raiders, a game in which they only put up six points the entire game. Since that time, they've beaten the Houston Texans. We know what struggles they have had, even though Deshaun Watson has been lights out. And then after that, they played the Eagles. And they played the Jacksonville Jaguars. So let's pump the brakes and not act like, oh, my Lord, they're eight and three. It's something special going on in Cleveland. The quality of competition that you have taken that you have taken out does have something to do with that as well. And so I look at Cleveland. Do I believe in Baker? No. Do I believe in the Browns? Yeah, that's where I'm at with it right now. But only a little bit. They'll make the playoffs. I don't expect them to make any noise, to be very clear. Well, I, I, I don't know what you're arguing. Are you arguing that you don't believe in them? Because you made the argument at the end there. The, the Jaguars by two points under a field goal. Okay. The Eagles by five points under a touchdown. And the Texans, who were well, two and seven fair. at the time, by a field goal. That's how they started winning games. I do not believe in the Browns, and it's because I don't believe in Baker Mayfield. And it took me a while to get there with Baker. I held out hope for Baker. But he doesn't do anything special. He can throw the ball well enough. He can read a defense well enough. He can move well enough. But nothing really stands out. And so he can be a good enough quarterback. But a good enough quarterback to win a Super Bowl? No, I don't think so. He needs a whole lot around him. I don't think he's good enough to win the whole thing. And in fact, the two divisional games he played, they got destroyed. They got destroyed by Baltimore week one. They got destroyed by Pittsburgh when it looked like maybe they could be coming on. No, I don't believe in the Browns. For the reasons you pointed out, I don't believe in the Browns. And, and, and it's because, like, maybe if you replace Baker with a better quarterback, I, maybe I would think, yeah, actually, they do have the, a couple of good backs. You know, and it, it, with, with Odell, here's an example of it's not a matter of addition by subtraction. It's a matter of separating two players. Baker Mayfield is better off without Odell because they have zero chemistry. And I know Odell is way better off without Baker. 
So, like, you saw the team kind of come together when there wasn't an issue, the, the, a, no, a zero chemistry issue between the quarterback and the wideout. But you're right. Landry is left. He can, he can, he's a really good receiver, and they got a couple of excellent running backs, and they got a good enough defense with some big-time playmakers. If it weren't for Baker, maybe I would believe in them. But Baker's on the team. He's only okay, and so I don't. Well, I would say this. The reason I'll say I do is because, again, to win in the playoffs, you got to have a defense and you got to have a running game. And when you look at the Browns' defense, particularly their ability to get to the quarterback, especially with Miles Garrett in there, obviously that's formidable. And then when you combine that with Chubb and Kareem Hunt, especially since Chubb has been back, you've seen what he's been able to do. I'm just of the mindset that when you look at them right now, you simply can't ignore what this guy is going to bring to the table. Their last three games, their three-game winning streak, He's rushed for 126 yards, 114 yards, and then last week against Jacksonville, 144 yards, averaging at least 5.7 yards in each game, a carry in each game. Nick Chubb is that dude. This brother is something special. And so when you look at him from coming out of the backfield, you can take that kind of game into on the road or even at home or, you know, off, or off Lake Erie in inclement weather. If you can run the football and you can defend – you can do some things, particularly to get to the postseason and be a potent threat to somebody else. So in that regard, I say, yes, again, I don't believe in Baker Mayfield either. But I do believe that that defense could get to the quarterback. And I do believe that running game will go wherever the team goes. They can be at home. They can travel on the road. The Desperate. You look up and anything could happen. I don't think it will. But you got to you, you just got to got to be careful. There's no doubt about it. And that is four slash Five downs. With the bonus down, we should mention uh, the Broncos have lost 10 straight games to the Chiefs. Drew Locke should be back. He's from Lee's Summit, Missouri, <laughs> right outside of Kansas City. So we'll see what happens on Sunday night football between those two. You think his mentioned. mother's going to the game? <laughs> oh, stop. No, I'm tweeted. serious. No, I'm, saying, no, I'm saying, do you stop. think Drew Locke's mom's going to go to the game? It's possible. Friendly. She's right there, yeah. close to it. The Kansas yeah. City people, they're playing in Kansas City. If not, she'll be on social media, so. Indeed. She's allowed to. It's the mother, Jay. I didn't say there's anything Defe wrong being on social media. Defending her son for not wearing a mask. I get it. All right. So you fellas said there's no <laughs> chance. Look at Zubin. Zubin. All right. Let's right. move on. Right. I don't want to talk about that. Not touching don't, it. Don't touch that. Go back to sports. <laughs> hey. Hey. I mean, we thought it was gentle when you said, would you call my son Patrick not Pat, the other quarterback on Sunday, his mom a little more fiery than Patrick Mahomes' mom. She just wanted a name clarification. Well, Laura Locke wanted Passionate. a little something more. All right, so obviously this is going to be a blowout for the Chiefs. We all know that. But there are a couple of interesting games this weekend that we've really been talking about this morning, and that's what we want you to weigh in on the Dr. Pepper call-in line at 888-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Essentially, who needs a win more? The Cardinals against the Rams, so Arizona – or the Browns sitting at 8-3 and three against the Titans, who are 8-3. and three. Hit us up or on the Twitter feed, Key J and Z, and we will love to get your opinion. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. Kevin Stefanski has done a great job in his first year as head coach of the Cleveland Browns, and he essentially said when a lot of coaches come in, it's all the cliches. My guys, culture, we've got to establish all of that. Stefanski was no different. The only difference... This Cleveland Browns coach that said all those things, he's actually backed it up. I don't think I came in here or any of our coaches came in here to change a culture. We just established our own and we just kind of explained what we're about and what we believe in. And, and I think to the player's credit, I think we have a bunch of guys that believe in the same things and then want to help the team any which way they can. So here's the point. Jay mentioned this earlier. I think it's really interesting. Could you give Kevin Stefanski serious consideration for coach of the year? And here's why I mention it. In a lot of other sports, the coach of the year, including in football, the coach of the year is always somebody that just exceeds expectations. If the Browns win 10 games, yeah, it's not as great as the Steelers winning 16 under Mike Tomlin. I get that. But we knew the Steelers were going to be good with the return of Ben Roethlisberger. We still didn't know what the Browns were going to be. So if they have their best season in 18 years, they make the playoffs for the first time in 18 years and snap the NFL's longest playoff drought relative to expectations, who's done better? Well, it, it, are you are you sixteen and zero versus nine and seven, or is it sixteen and zero or fifteen and one versus ten and six? It, it's it's because at some point 
that gap is too much. Let's call let's call the Steelers 14 and 2. Let's call the Chiefs 15 and 1. Not perfect, right? So you take the perfect off the table. I understand 16 and 0 is 16 and 0. But let's just say a couple stubs down the road and both teams are 14 15 win teams and the Browns win 10 games, make the playoffs, shatter expectations. Then I then they probably could at that point go to Kevin Stefanski. I don't have a vote, but that's what I would do. And just so Kevin Stefanski knows, coach you change the culture doing it your way. Just so that he knows. They may be doing it his way, but it's not the same as it was in the past. So, therefore, it changed. I just want him to know that because he said the 